Hi, it's Maria from Still Dreaming Homestead. Glad to be back with you. We're going to continue reading in our book, Little House on the Prairie by Laura Ingalls Wilder. So yesterday, this chapter was Indian War Cry. And that was a very tense and scary night. So today's chapter, though, is chapter 24, Indians Right Away. There was another long night of sleep. It was good to lie down and sleep soundly. Everything was safe and quiet. Only the owls called, whoo, whoo, in the woods along the creek, while the great moon sailed slowly over the curve of the sky above the endless prairie. In the morning, the sun shone warmly. Down by the creek, the frogs were croaking. Grump. Rump, they cried by the edge of the pools. Knee deep, knee deep, better go round. That's what they thought it sounded like. Ever since Ma had told them what the frogs were saying, Mary and Laura could hear the words plain as day. The door was open to let in the warm spring air. After breakfast, Pa went out, whistling merrily. He was going to hitch Pet and Patty to the plow again. But his whistling suddenly stopped. He stood on the doorstep, looking towards the east. He said, come here, Carolyn. And you, Mary and Laura. Laura ran out first. She was surprised. The Indians were coming. They did not come up the creek road. They came riding up out of the creek bottoms far to the east. First came a tall Indian who had gone riding by the house in the moonlight. Jack was growling and Laura's heart beat fast. She was glad she was close to Pa, but she knew this was a very good Indian. It's this one right there. The Osage chief would stop the terrible war cries. His black pony came trotting willingly, stiffing the wind that blew its mane and tail like fluttering banners. The pony's nose and head were free. It wore no bridle. Not even one strap was on it anywhere. There was nothing to make it do anything it didn't want to do. Willingly, it came trotting along the old Indian trail, as if it liked to carry the Indian on its back. Jack growled savagely, trying to get loose from his chain. He remembered this Indian who had pointed a gun at him. Pa said, be still, Jack. Jack growled again. For the first time in their lives, Pa struck him. That means he hit him. Lie down, be still. Jack cowered and was still. The pony was very near now, and Laura's heart beat faster and faster. She looked at the Indian's beaded moccasin, that's his shoes. She looked up along the fringed leggings that clung to the pony's bare side. A bright colored blanket was wrapped around the Indian. One bare brown arm carried a rifle lightly across the pony's naked shoulders. Then Laura looked up at the Indian's fierce, still brown face. It was a proud, still face. No matter what happened, it would always be like that. Nothing would change it. Only the eyes were alive in that face and they gazed steadily far to the west. They did not move. Nothing moved or changed except the eagle feathers standing straight up from the scalp lock on the shaved head. The long feathers swayed and dipped waving and spinning in the wind as the tall Indian on the black pony passed into the distance. Chichin Duchid himself 
Pa said under his breath, and he lifted his hand to wave a salute. But the happy pony and the motionless Indian went by. They went by as if the house and stable and Pa and Ma and Mary and Laura were not there at all. Pa and Ma and Mary and Laura slowly turned and looked at the Indian's proud straight back. Then other ponies and other blankets and shaved heads and eagle feathers came between. One by one on the path, more and more warriors were riding behind the chief. Brown face after brown face went by. Ponies' manes and tails blew in the wind. Heads glittered, fringe flapped, eagle feathers were waving on all the naked heads. Rifles laying on the pony's shoulders bristled all along the line. Laura was excited about the ponies. There were black ponies and bay ponies, gray and brown and spotted ponies. Their little feet went trippity trip trip, trippity trip trip, pat patter, pat patter, trippity trip trip, all along the Indian trail. Their nostrils widened. Let's see, can I do it? I don't know, I can't do it. At Jack and their bodies shied away from him, but they came on bravely looking with their bright eyes at Laura. Oh, the pretty ponies. See the pretty ponies? She cried, clapping her hands. Look at the spotted one. She thought she would never be tired of watching the ponies coming by, but after a while she began to look at the women and children on their backs. The women and children were riding behind the Indian men. Little naked brown Indians, no bigger than Mary and Laura, were riding the pretty ponies. The ponies did not have to wear bridles or saddles, and the little Indians did not have to wear clothes. All their skin was out in fresh air in the sunshine. Their straight black hair blew in the wind, and their black eyes sparkled with joy. They sat on their ponies stiff and still like grown-up Indians. Laura looked and looked at the Indian children, and they looked at her. She had a naughty wish to be a little Indian girl. Of course, she didn't really mean it. She only wanted to be bare naked in the wind and the sunshine and riding along on one of those gay little ponies. The Indian children mothers were riding ponies too. Leather fringe dangled about their legs and blankets were wrapped around their bodies. But the only thing on their heads was their black, smooth hair. Their faces were brown and placid, that's calm. Some of their had narrow bundles tied on their backs and tiny baby heads stuck out of the top of those bundles. And some babies and small children rode in the baskets, hanging on the pony's sides, besides their mothers. More, and I'm gonna show you what looked like in this little basket. You know how children here have to ride in a car seat? This baby rides in a basket. More and more ponies passed and more children and more babies on their mother's backs. More babies in baskets on the pony's sides. Then came a mother riding with a baby in a basket on each side of her pony. She had twins. Laura looked straight into the bright eyes of the little baby near her. Only its small head showed above the basket's rim. Its hair was black as a crow and its eyes were as black as the night with no stars shining. Those black eyes looked deep into Laura's eyes and she looked deep down into the blackness of the little baby's eyes and she wanted that little baby. Pa, she said, get me that little Indian baby. Hush, Laura, Pa told her sternly. The little baby was going by. Its head turned and its eyes kept looking into Laura's eyes. Oh, I want it, I want it, Laura begged. The baby was going farther and farther away and did not stop looking back at Laura. It wants to stay with me, Laura begged. 
Please, Pa, please. Hush, Laura, Pa said. The Indian woman wants to keep her baby. Oh, Pa, Laura, Laura pleaded, and then she began to cry. It was shameful to cry, but she couldn't help it. The little Indian baby was gone. She knew she would never see it any more. Ma said she'd never heard of such a thing. For shame, Laura, she said. But Laura could not stop crying. Why on earth do you want a little Indian baby of all things? Ma asked. Its eyes are so black, Laura sobbed. She could not say what she meant. Why, Laura, Ma said, you don't want another baby. We have a baby, one of our own. I want the other one too, Laura sobbed loudly. Well, I declare, Ma exclaimed. Look at the Indians, Laura, said Pa. Look west and then look east and see what you see. Laura could hardly see at first. Her eyes were full of tears and sobs kept jerking down her throat. <laughs> But she obeyed Pa as best as she could, and in the moment, she was still. As far as she could see to the west and as far as she could see to the east, there were Indians. There was no end to that long, long line. More and more and more Indians came riding by. Baby Carrie grew tired of looking at Indians and played by herself on the floor. But Laura sat on the doorstep. Pa stood close beside her, and Ma and Mary stood in the doorway. They looked and looked and looked at Indians riding by. It was dinner time, which we probably would call lunch, and no one thought of dinner. Indian ponies were still going by. This must have been a very large tribe. Carrying bundles of skin and tent poles and dangling baskets and cooking pots, there were a few more women and a few more naked Indian children. Then the very last pony went by. But Pa, Ma, and Laura still stayed in the doorway looking till that long line of Indians slowly pulled itself over the western edge of the world. And nothing was left but silence and emptiness. All the world seemed very quiet and lonely. Ma said she didn't feel like doing anything. So, and Pa told her, don't do anything but rest, Carolyn. You must eat something, Charles, Ma said. No, said Pa, I don't feel hungry. He went soberly up to hitch Pet and Patty and began to break the tough sod with the plow. Laura could not eat anything either. She sat a long time on the doorstep looking into the empty west where the Indians had gone. She still seemed to see the waving feathers and the black eyes and to hear the sound of the ponies, ponies' feet. Well, that would have been something to see. The whole tribe leaving and heading maybe to head to go hunt buffalo i don't know well it's maria from still dreaming homestead i want to pray blessings on you and yours in your house and out of your house in the day and the night whatever you do keep dreaming bye bye